So if you watch the videos for this week for Totus Tuus, um, you'll see one video I was super excited about. Uh, we have uh, Rose Kierkesner, who she's, uh, she goes to, um, I think it's uh, Metamora. Yeah, she goes to St. Mary's in Metamora, and she is a black belt in Taekwondo. And I was really excited because we have a video in which she kicks me in the face. So that was really fun. Uh, she didn't actually kick me in the face. She's just really good. She got her foot real super close to my face. Uh, and I was like, oh, this will be fun. I trusted her. Uh, so we got one from her. And uh, then we got one from Luke Olson. But the cool thing about Luke's is uh, I usually do the editing. And he went ahead and just edited his video. So I didn't really, I barely did anything. Um, the only thing I did add uh, on there. So he talks about missing mass. So I, I did make sure everybody knows that you know, when masses are suspended in a time of coronavirus, it, it's okay to miss mass. But obviously, we have to do something else to make up for it. So I, uh, you know, this this year, everything kind of really came together by God's grace. Um, we had this whole theme of the commandments and the Beatitudes. Uh, our seminarian, Deacon Nick Wilson, now he made our, our curriculum. He put it together. Uh, and so, of course, we know the commandments and the Beatitudes uh, both are things that they find that... Uh, were given to us on mountains. So you see uh, Mr. Chase, he talks about that in his video. Um, and so then we kind of stumbled upon Blessed Pierre Giorgio Frassati, who will learn a little bit about what he has to do with mountains and what mountains have to do with him. Uh, but uh, you kind of saw that, that intro video that Mr. Chase and I did. Um, so it's all from the Holy Spirit. Um, and I think what God really wants us to know during this time is that no matter what's going on in our lives, we are still called to the heights. We're still called to the heights of holiness. We're still called to practice the virtues. Because, you know, the thing about the Beatitudes is that God has a promise for us. God has really uh, beautiful, incredible promises prepared for us. Uh, but we just need to conform our lives. We need to shape and mold our lives to fit the pattern of Jesus. Uh, I was reading in the Catechism the other day, and um, look, I just read the catechism randomly. No, I was actually getting ready to talk to our totus to his teachers about, uh, about the Beatitudes. And the catechism says that the Beatitudes are reflected on the countenance of Jesus. Now, I don't know if you know what countenance means, but it's a fancy word for face or likeness. Uh, and so when we, when we think about the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the meek, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. When we meditate on those, we can really see the face of Jesus. Now, we really get to know him. You know, you think about somebody who, uh, when you see them, you see their face, you just recognize, and you have all these feelings, and you know their personality. Um, when we meditate on the Beatitudes, which is what we're trying to help uh, everyone meditate on, uh, we get to see the face of Jesus, but then the face of Jesus reflects back on us, reflects back on us. And because we're Christians, named after Christ, because we're we are conformed to the Son, uh, we get to reflect the image of Jesus. So, all right. All of that being said, we're going to begin here. And there's a couple things. So I'm I'm using a little studio here that I want to make sure that I know what I'm doing with. All right, everybody. Welcome, everyone, to Totus Tuus 2020. So ordinarily during Totus Tuus, for those who have been, you get to meet some of the saints, some surprise guests. We thought, well, how are we going to do that? How's that going to happen? Well, thankfully, they have Internet in heaven. So uh, now we are going to and we are so excited to have exclusive access to be able to interview the patron for Totus Tuus 2020, Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati. So I'm going to bring him on. So, blessed Pier Giorgio, how are you doing? Doing great, Father. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for taking time. I mean, you have all the time, you know, so it's not like you, it's a huge sacrifice, but we are super grateful that you are here. Thank you. Happy to be here. Absolutely. So I just want to let people know, um, 
in the description for the YouTube, uh, also kind of scrolling across the screen is a URL and you can type that URL in and you can uh, submit uh, what, whatever comments you want to make. We didn't just want to open it up to random weirdos on YouTube. So <laughs> that's why we kind of have it as a, a little bit of a closed system. Uh, but if there are comments from all of our Totus Tuus family across the diocese, uh, then I will read them and, and we can kind of make some comments on them. Uh, but I, of course, have done diligent work. I am a hard-nosed investigative reporter, blessed Pierre Giorgio. So I really want you to, I really, I really have some questions that uh, I would love uh, to talk to you about. Right. So first, obviously, you seem really holy. I mean, that's like how you got the name Blessed, right? Um, but, you know, holiness doesn't just like poof, come out of nowhere. Uh, I mean, obviously, it gives it, God gives it to us, but, but it comes through other people. So uh, the first, we know the first uh, community that we all experience is the family. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your family and did they have an influence on you being so holy? Sure. Uh, it was my mother who really instilled the faith in me and my little sister. Um, but then my father, he did not have a faith, but he still affected me in a lot of ways. He influenced some of my political opinions and my concern for the people of Italy, especially the city of Turin, where I lived. Oh, that's great. What's yeah. good, what's interesting, Oh, yeah, go ahead. Did you have something else? Oh, oh, yeah, I also had a bigger family, a bigger community. So I was involved with all with a Catholic action. I was involved with the St. Vincent de Paul Society and with the Third Order of Dominicans. And that helped also to influence me, to give me a bigger family, a family that was about faith. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, God wants to give us uh, a family, not just the family we're born into, um, and, uh, you know, it's not that we can trade our family, obviously, uh, but, um, you're stuck with kids at home or stuck with their brothers and sisters, but God gives us a bigger family. And what's really cool for me to hear is that you were, uh, on earth, you were so involved. You were involved in politics. You were involved in, in your culture. Uh, you didn't just like stay back and say, well, I guess I got to hide in the closet and pray. Um, Jesus sent you out to change the world. So that's really cool to hear because I think Jesus, uh, I know Jesus is sending, really wants to send these young people out to change the world. Um, so, okay, so that's holiness. Uh, and a lot of people think, well, obviously holiness is just really boring. You're just like, you know, walking through the streets, hitting yourself on the head with a Bible, uh, carrying a sack, you know, wearing a sackcloth, all that. Uh, we know from Totus Tuus, we know that that's not the case. We know that uh, the holier you are, the closer you are to Jesus, the more you become you, the more uh, joy you have, even in difficult times. Uh, but but what about like fun? Did you, I mean, do you like fun? Did you have any fun when you were on earth? What, what did you like doing? Oh yeah, I had a lot of fun here on earth. I had a, a big friend group and I was always very uh, uh, willing to share about my faith and my prayer life with them. But we would also do fun things. We loved mountain climbing. That was always just the peak of fun. Uh, <laughs> Pure Giorgio, you made a pun from heaven. Does this mean that God approves of puns? Well, of course, seriousness isn't always a virtue. <laughs> yes. All right, sorry, go ahead. I just, I just yeah. now know that puns are canonized, so I'm super excited. Now, so I also loved theater, and I loved the opera, and I loved to read. Dante was my favorite author. Wow. Um, yeah, I love that. Oh, we'll talk about Peaks, right? So Dante, his last book. Uh, yeah, I'm sure all the, you know, Totus Tuus uh, third and fourth graders have obviously read um, uh, uh, the Paradiso, but no, I'm just kidding. Anyway, when they're older, they will. But it's about going up the mountain to encounter God. There's like this whole theme just hitting us over the head. I also like, uh, Blessed Pierre Giorgio, that you like the theater because our incoming uh, uh, bishop, co-juder bishop, um, Bishop Lou, I'm sure you've seen from heaven, you know, of mm -hmm. course, um, that uh, that we got a new co-juder bishop. He likes the theater, too. So, so. also, by the way, if you can uh, uh, just kind of do some stuff about this Fulton Sheen thing, we'd really appreciate that, too. I know, you know, you're, you've got your blessed, so we want to get him that blessed. We know he's up there. Um, Put a good so, uh, all, <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate. I really appreciate that. Uh, most people. So most people I talk to don't. They don't get to tell me about their funeral. Okay, for obvious reasons. 
Um, but since you're in heaven, you get a different perspective. Uh, do you want to just tell us a little bit about your funeral? I mean, did anybody, uh, you know, what happened after you died? Yeah, just go ahead and tell us. Yeah, sure. So I was only 24 when I died. I had the disease polio, which is a very scary, and it's a very scary disease. And my family, they didn't know a lot about the work that I was doing around Turin for the poor of the area. And so they were shocked. At my funeral, there were hundreds and hundreds of people. All, and they were shocked to hear that I was from a family. My father was a senator in Italy and an ambassador. So they didn't think that I was from some great high class family. So there was a lot, a lot of shock at my funeral. Wow. What's amazing is, yeah, you did all that good on earth, but you didn't do it so that people would like pat you on the back or say, good job. You did it uh, really just because you love Jesus and you saw Jesus in, in the poor. Uh, that's really exciting. You know, you think about all the hidden things we do. It's like, does anybody notice? Well, God notices. Um, so it's just good encouragement for us to keep practicing, following the commandments and the Beatitudes. Um so, I mean, speaking of that, like all these people showed up at your funeral. Why were they so drawn to you? I mean, uh, like, did you know cool skateboarding tricks or did you have like the best Xbox, you know, in the early 1900s or like what made like what made you so attractive to all the young people around you? Well, there is nothing more attractive than holiness. If you think about people who have drawn the biggest crowds, it's people like John Paul II, really holy people. And that's not something that is about pride. It's simply about love. When you love God and you love others, you will always have people drawn to you. Mm, that's really, it's like a magnet. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, uh, and you know, I think also everybody nowadays, lots of people are really, really worried. Like, what does this other person think of me? What do my friends think of me? Uh, you know, what does that person uh, you know, even on the internet nowadays, uh, obviously when you were around, you didn't have to worry about uh, the internet. But the thing is, you didn't worry so much. What did other people think of me? You just worried about like, what does God think of me? Um, and what's amazing is that made you free. And people love someone who's free and who is themselves, somebody who's free and who is genuine. So that's really cool to see. Um, so what about like, I mean, obviously your life wasn't just all fun and um, I mean, it does sound pretty difficult, you know, like the ways that you serve the poor people and, you know, gave them your, your shoes and all these things. Uh, but what other big challenge did you, challenges did you face as a young person uh, that even like young people still face today? The world's different, but uh, being young is, is still very much the same. And, and how did you confront those challenges? Well, one challenge was juggling all the things in my life that I loved. I loved my family. I was always devoted to them. And I loved the poor of Turin but I also loved mountain climbing and I was part of all sorts of organizations. So life can become very busy and it can be tough to find support in your life. So that was something that I had struggled with as a young person was my education, these organizations I was involved with, and then all of the works that I was committed to do. But you can always find strength for that through a prayer life. Hmm. So you kind of you're saying like you put your prayer life first uh, and like even though you were super busy, you still kind of had the time and the energy to, to do these other things. That's right. Uh, so, I mean, for me, I think about like like kids are involved in so much. There's so much going on these days. I mean, I obviously with coronavirus has kind of slowed down, but you got travel soccer, you got all these different things. And, uh, you know, I'm blessed to know I know two two men who went into who became professional athletes and. Uh, both of them, their their parents told them, uh, if it's a choice between your sport and mass, uh, you're not doing your sport. You know, and and both of them, they wanted to become professional. Right? So it's exactly what you're talking about. Like uh, even nowadays, um, you know, and and it's like, gosh, there's a lot of things. In some ways, we have more time than you did because you know you had to like, you didn't even have like you didn't even know what a washing machine was when you were on Earth, or at least electric one. Um. So how about this? Here's this phrase, to the heights. Um, and thank you, by the way. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really grateful that you are speaking English with us um, because I know that on earth you just you spoke Italian, you're an Italian, mm -hmm. but 
thankfully in heaven. Um, I'm sure you mostly speak Latin up in heaven. It's true. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted, I wasn't sure. Uh, but you know, you've, you've deigned to speak English with us. So we're really grateful for that. Uh, well, of so, course, Pentecost is going on all the time up here. Ah, oh, that's so cool. Oh, and we just had a video from uh, Miss Lindsay on, on Pentecost. So, um, yeah, the tongues of fire. I always think that's interesting that they call them tongues. But anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, what about that phrase to the heights, verso lo alto, that, that phrase that we've been kind of making a big deal out of and we've got on all our videos. Uh, I don't want to just like that to be like this cool phrase, you know, like a, a brand name like Nike, just do it. I want to know and I want to hear straight from the, the blessed's mouth. What does that mean? Like, are you just a fan of tall things or what does that phrase mean? No, that phrase is a call to excellence. It's a call to things that are the best. It's a call to the best life. Metaphorically, to the highest things. It means a call to things like virtue and holiness, because those are the highest things you can do. The things that bring you closest to God. Hmm. That's you know what I really like about that is like uh, you are you are a man of adventure, right? And so you like you climb these mountains, you do know, all these things. And life really is meant to be an adventure. And I always tell you, know, I get to talk to young people about the voices we hear. You know, not I mean like you know in your head, but the voice of God, the voice of the world. And the way I always explain it is this: the voice of God is like a mountain. You know, if you ever like when you see those mountains, like when you would see those mountains in Italy, I'm sure you just looked at those and you were like, I'm going to climb that. You know, the voice of God lifts us out of ourselves, out of our own selfishness and, you know, you know, all the, the sins we have and calls us to something higher. Even though, obviously, we mess up. We're not perfect. Um, I mean, you are. But, uh, anyway, well, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the voice of the world says, hey, there's that mountain up there. Um, just ignore it. You know, just keep going on this easy path. And that is so boring. Blessed Pierre Giorgio. The world is so boring. This whole, the mount, the, the beatitudes, um, the virtues, just this adventure of holiness. It gets me really excited. That's why, I mean, that's why we do totus to us, right? Yeah, sir. <laughs> so what about, okay, this last, this is, this is the last question I have. And, and uh, I, I just kind of want to hear from you. Like, is there anything else that you really want these young people of totus to us to know? Sure. In a life of holiness, it's always important to look for support. But even in the midst of busyness, in the midst of times when it doesn't feel like you have support, it's always paramount. It's important to have a prayer life. Nice. Thank you. That is so huge. And it's like, yeah, that can go, kind of go over our heads or we can just we hear it so often. But it's so important. I mean, I always tell people, look, if you get to heaven and you haven't spent time praying, this God's going to say to you, well, why do you want to spend eternity with me? You didn't want to spend any time with me on earth. But blessed Pierre, you you got to spend time with God on earth. You chose to in the, in the midst of all the busyness. And so then when you, when you got to heaven, uh, God was like, hey, you spent time with me in prayer. You spent time with me in the poor. Uh, so, of course, let's spend time in all of eternity. So I'm. Um, um, one one person did have uh, like a comment. I, I invited it for for comments, but they asked a question. Um, they they wanted to know. Let me look real quick. Oh oh, this is one of the Dwyer kids from St. Mark's. Um, they want to know if you know Marie Berlinger. I do know Marie Berlinger. Yes, yes, and okay. I've been very impressed with her teaching so far. Oh, that's great! It's so cool. God lets you kind of look in and see what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, I really hope that we can all uh, turn to Blessed Pierre Giorgio Frasati. And I know that he's going to keep walking with us throughout this time, uh, throughout our summer, but also through our lives. He's going to help us up that, uh, that, that mountain of holiness. So um, now let's turn to uh, a saint who's uh, in an even greater place than you, who's way, way, way high up, but somehow she's also so close to us because she's our mother. I know she's somebody who you were close to um, in this earth, but and then you get to spend all of eternity with her, which I'm kind of jealous in a holy way, but I'm looking forward to it, uh, God willing, maybe in, in heaven. Um, let's turn to our mother, Mary, and let's end with a Hail Mary. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with all of you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks, Blessed Pier Giorgio. And uh, we look forward to more Totus to Us 2020. We got two more weeks. So everybody go check out those videos. Do the activities, by the way. There's some cool activities on the, the website. And go ahead and do those. So, all right. God bless everybody. Have a good rest of your day.